Tattoo was the Russian super duo that broke ground in 2002. Their massive breakout hit All The Things She Said is a certified classic and one of the catchiest pop songs to come out of the thousands. Looking back, it's mind-blowing that the song was a major pop culture moment. Not because of the lesbianism, which in itself undoubtedly caused controversy during that time, but because they were two young girls presenting themselves as lesbian. But in fact, they were two straight women that were essentially a project for two producers. They were only 14 years old when they were recruited for the group in 1999. Like a lot of teen pop groups, they were steered to success by the people in charge, but this time led on by a rather large lie. Tattoo was put together by Ivan Shopolov and Alexander Volintinsky. Tattoo was Ivan Shopolov's brainchild. They found Julia Volkova and Lena Katina, two young and marketable girls. This was the age of Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera, so having a young, successful female act like Tattoo would fit right in during that period in time. In fact, Britney Spears had made her debut a few years before Tattoo in her iconic Catholic schoolgirl uniform while begging her baby to hit her one more time, which caused quite a bit of controversy, considering Spears was only 17 at the time of its release. Correspondingly, following Spears, a young Christina Aguilera made her debut the following year with Genie in a Bottle, which received similar criticism with claims of the hit single being a bit too racy. A few years later in 2002, Tattoo managed to eclipse both of their backlash by miles, taking it to incredibly new yet uncomfortable heights. All the things she said was practically an instant hit. The track had a steady run on the UK charts and even peaked at number one. It was a top 20 hit in the USA and topped the charts in several countries around the globe. The video was directed by Tattoo's creator Ivan Shopolov. It featured Volkova and Katina kissing and touching each other in the pouring rain, while wearing outfits similar to Britney Spears' Catholic schoolgirl uniform. The video became a mainstay on MTV, where it was called to be banned by multiple publications, but was only banned in their home country of Russia for featuring acts of lesbianism. Eventually, their crossover album 200 km per hour in the wrong lane was released. It was an obvious success, spearheaded by all the things she said selling millions of copies globally, and setting records that were unheard of for Russian acts. The remaining singles on the album, Not Gonna Get Us, 30 Minutes, and Halston is now performed moderately well. Still, international interest in the group had already started to fade away after their disingenuous revelation. There was talk that all the things she said was just too inappropriate and crossed too many lines. Was their relationship real? Was it fabricated? A lot of people dismissed it as a cheap gimmick, and to an extent, they were right. It was all very performative. A documentary of the girls called Anatomy of Tattoo focused on their life, and they ultimately revealed that they weren't lesbians. The idea for the girls to take on this act was largely the producer of the group's idea, Ivan Shopolov. In an interview with the Daily Beast, Katina said, I looked at it as my role, like a movie. I never was a lesbian. I never was attracted to a girl. Likewise, Vokova was also living life as an openly straight woman, with a long-term boyfriend some years later. The girls would later express their discontent with Ivan. He spends his time thinking up new scandals instead of planning our artistic work. I'm sure our fans would rather hear new songs and new albums than new scandals, said Vokova. Katina later made this comment about their manager. He made us out to be lesbians when we were just singing for lesbians. We wanted people to understand them and not judge them, that they are as free as anyone else. Prior to speaking out against Ivan, they had already decided to cut ties with him professionally and a suit upon their musical journey. The next English album released by Tattoo was Dangerous and Move In in 2005. Before the release of this album, it was also revealed that Julia was pregnant, which led to further criticism and this album not doing nearly as well as their previous efforts. Still, they achieved some success. The lead single All About Us became a top 10 hit across Europe and the world, peaking at number 8 in the UK and number 13 on the US Billboard Hot Dance Club chart. The other singles from the album failed to make a dent, and when their independently released album Waste Management in 2009 got even less of a response, the girls officially announced their split via the Tattoo website. After 10 years of collaboration, Katina and Vakova decided to go solo. They had grown tired of each other and infamously bickered in the press throughout the years. They attempted to reunite a few times, but it always fell through. 
However, they did successfully come together for a performance at the 2014 Winter Olympics in Russia. The constant cancellation of their shows, the controversy, inconsistency, and ultimately the revelation that they were a fake took a toll on their careers. However, they still remain the most globally successful Russian act of all time in music. In 2014, they made headlines globally, not for any performance or awaited reunion, but because one of the members was spewing homophobic remarks. Yes, the fake lesbian is homophobic. Wakova was asked if she would condemn her son if he was gay in an interview. She responded by saying, Yes, I would condemn him, because I believe that a real man must be a real man. She continued, I won't accept a gay son. I think for men, it's a bad freedom. In our time, there is a very large number of frivolous girls, and a man can be with a large number of these girls. This is freedom for men, and a man has no right to be a two girls together not the same thing as two men together. It seems to me that lesbians look aesthetically much nicer than two men holding their hands or kissing. But I want to say that I'm not against gays. I just want my son to be a real man, not a... I have many gay friends. I believe that being gay is still better than murderers, thieves, or drug addicts. If you choose out of all of this, being gay is a little better than the rest. This is exactly why performative sexual orientations are harmful. People can benefit off of the LGBT community and go and say stuff like this in interviews after they reap the benefits that true LGBT people struggle to obtain. Meanwhile, the other half of Tattoo, Lena Katina, presented a more accepting approach, saying, Hey y'all, I'm seeing some comments lately regarding my position about LGBT and my religion. I can say one thing. God is teaching us to live in love, to be tolerant, and not to judge other people. And I do so. Love is love, and it is a wonderful feeling. I think everybody should be free to love who they love and be with who they want to spend their life with. XO. As a result of their many controversies, there has been a lot of questions about their legacy. They were a fake, but they were also young, vulnerable, and heavily manufactured by older men. But one of the members has also been openly homophobic. The other half has been more supportive. All the things she said is still a very adored hit. Controversy aside, all the things she said is just such a good song, which is why it has held up after so many years and became an anthem. It's a cult classic, but their legacy is also quite complicated. You could argue that the song, despite its controversies, has been reclaimed by the LGBT youth, therefore lending a voice and in turn becoming an anthem, a point made by Vice magazine. It is a song that many people can identify with. You can also write it off as a gimmick and cheap way to gain attraction. But ultimately, I think all the things she said will never lose its cult classic status. I do think their story is unfortunate, and that they had the power to be so much more than what they became and could have been such an important voice. But there's also so many factors to consider, like these older producers molding these young girls into what the public would perceive them as. But also the homophobic remarks post-tattoo is just inexcusable. All the things she said is more or less all we have to discuss about their complicated musical legacy. It's their most timeless hit. It's a gem clouded by so much complication and negativity. But ultimately, I do believe it'll retain its popularity throughout the years.